In this training session, we talk about HVAC rough done right the first time. Install the ductwork sized and located according to the HVAC plan. Install the ducts to the plenum with the dampers fully open. Apply UL181 compliant duct mastic to the inside of the inner liner of the flex duct to create an air seal. UL181 compliant mastic is to be used to seal the plenum to the air handler as well as to all connections in the forced air system. UL181 mastic must be applied to the inside of the duct connectors as well as the collar prior to sliding the inner liner over the collar. Every connection, no exceptions. Use UL181 compliant mastic for all air sealing in the forced air system. When using UL181 compliant mastic to seal the air distribution system, use fiber mesh tape to reinforce gaps larger than one quarter inch. Use tie wraps to secure the inner liner of the duct to both the plenum and the boot. Use a second tie wrap to secure the insulation layer after it has been pulled over the inner liner. Push the insulation tight to the connection to minimize heat gain or loss through the uninsulated sections of the air distribution system. Ensure all ductwork is supported with open slings at four foot intervals to avoid compressing the insulation. The strapping tape should be three inches wide. Fully insulate all duct boots. The mastic application and duct connection details should follow the same procedure previously described at the plenum. Observe DSLD policy on cutting and repairing framing members. When there is more than 40% of the top plate removed, a mending plate is required. Install the secondary drain pan with a minimum of one half inch per foot slope towards the secondary condensate drain line. Secure all portions of the drain system with strapping at a minimum of every four feet. Ensure all drain lines have a positive rate of fall of one quarter inch per foot or greater. All exterior penetrations are to be flashed with a self-adhesive window flashing tape in the following sequence, the bottom, the sides, and the top. The tape should be well adhered to the home wrap using a roller. James Bell has been notified and has consented. The larger suction line on the line set should be fully insulated from end to end. Support the line set a minimum of every four feet. After the line set is installed, insulated, and secured, check to see that it is not in contact with the roof deck. This will prevent the lines from being punctured by nailing from the roof. Fully insulate the main condensate drain line to the vertical drain to prevent any moisture from condensing on the surface of the pipe. All combustion appliance ventilation must have a minimum of one inch separation from all combustibles, without exception. There is a maximum allowance of 20 feet to appliances in the attic from the attic access, even if the six foot height requirement is met. This is to avoid discrepancies. The walkway should be 24 inches wide with the platform at the appliance 30 inches by 30 inches minimum. B-vent should terminate using the following chart. Hang the equipment from the ceiling. Ensure control wires are neatly run and protected from chafing on strapping material and sharp metal edges. No large headed screws on boot or dryer vent strapping. Tightly drive the flat headed screws to minimize the head projection. Dryer vents are to be installed smoothly cut per plan, 12 inches center of pipe off a of slab, 2 and 1 half inches in length. The tolerance here is plus or minus 1 quarter inch. Remove all construction material and personal trash upon completion of the job. Sweep up all screws and cuttings that are in the home. Do not throw any debris in the yard no matter what it may be. This is clearly stated in the trash agreement. This is how we do it. Ducks laid out according to plan, all connections sealed with UL181 compliant duct mastic, all dampers left open, all boots fully insulated, drain lines sloped to drain, exterior penetrations flashed to repel water. Do it right the first time and everybody wins.